Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I am going to discuss in detail the use of some important functions and operators. So, first, I am going to create a new project, console application, go, C++, next, assign name to the project. So, testing. program the next make sure that the compiler must be GNU GCC compiler finish then go to resources command this one so we have already this program so first we need to discuss about the string length how to find out the length of a string so the length of a string literal is the number of character it contains for example the word hello has five length because five characters h e l l o so basically c plus plus provide a special predefined function named str l e n pronounce sterling that you can use to obtain the length of any string but when you are programming to use the string length function, it should contain a header file string dot h. So now we need to write a program. Already we have a program which prints the length of several string literals. So first we need to add hash include string dot h. We must need to include this header file then here we just need to apply strlen this means string length so this is a function simply counts the number of character in this specified string and then it must be within the brackets so i need to copy this line and paste it uh, three more times so here I will be just removing the word then here will be just H E L just H E and here will be just H so now this string length function will basically count the length or the number of characters it contains so now if we just build this one so zero errors zero warnings now if I just run this one so now the first one basically hello world these are total 20 characters then hello five characters then he h e two characters and then h one characters so that's the use of the string length function to find out the length of the string so another important thing is the variable declaration we already discussed variable declaration integer variable declaration in the last tutorial but in c plus plus a declaration may appear anywhere within the programs there are no restrictions so but note that the variable cannot be used before it is declared so now here we will write a simple program so for example so first I need to delete these lines just to make it simple then I need to declare some integer variable and x comma y so these are declare the variables just declares the variables x and y then we need to assign some value to these variables x equal to 100 and then y equal to 200 and the third variable and z equal to 300 so declare the variable z initializing it to 300 so we can declare the variable anywhere within the program like look at here first we define int x y then we assign the values and here we just simply write int z equal to 300 then we just need to print out these variables so c out x 
and uh, I will meet and it will be two times to be more space between the results then I need to copy this line also to print y and z on the screen so and this will be z so before run first need to build so zero errors zero warnings so we just need simply to run so now x is 100 y is 200 z is 300 so this program tell us that we can declare variable anywhere within the programs so there is no restriction that we must need to declare at the start or at, or at the end we can declare anywhere the variables within the program so initialization may also be used in compound declarations for example here we have already int z 300 i need to define few more variables w x6 and yy so now the six variables are all declared to have type int x y z w x x y y but only three variables x y and z are initialized the, the remaining three variable w x x y y are not initialized so at this point if i run the code the program will be run but it will give me some warning because the three variables w x x and y y are not initialized okay let's try build so now the warnings unused variable w unused variable xxx unused variable yy but it will run if you run this so one can see the result on the screen 100 200 and 300 in programming sometime we need to use the change assignment an assignment itself is an expression with a value so the value of an assignment can be used in another assignment and that's called chain assignment. Now I will show this with an example how an assignment can be used with an end expression. So here we have already int x, y. So just deleting these lines and then I will be simply need int x, y. So then I use the change assignment so y equal to x equal to 100 plus 200 so x equal to 100 is an assignment expression so its value is 100 then 100 plus 200 will be assigned to y and that's answer will be 300 so if we just print these here is y x first I need to print y then the x one so we don't have the variable z so th this, this is basically called the chain assignment but uh, in, in some words it's called the embedded assignment but uh, the good thing is in programming try to avoid using the embedded assignment so uh, first we need to build so zero error zero warnings and then we need to run so now 300 and 100 so avoid to use the embedded assignment the best way is just to use like this for example and x equal to 100 and then we just need to use and y equal to x plus 100 so here x equal to 100 and then y equal to x plus 100 so its value is 100 then 100 so when we add these two values the final results will be 200 so this is the best way to use the assign the operators so we just need to build zero error zero warnings and then to run so the answer is 200 and 100 these are there are some situations in which embedded assignment do makes a program more readable but uh, that only possible when we have a number of variables and all the variables have the same value so in that case one can simply use like for example here we can just declare um, and x y and then we can simply say x equal to y equal to 100 so this is okay because 
here both the variables x and y have the same value 100 so in this case the good thing is to write in this way so we already declare the end so here we don't need to define again end x y x y equal to 100 so now just build this one zero errors zero warnings and now to run so 100 and 100 a chain assignment cannot be used as an initialization in a declaration that's too important for example here if i can just simply say end x equal to y equal to 100 so it's not good and it's not possible to use the chain assignment operator in, within the initialization so if i just simply build it's give me some error that why not declare so the best way is to do this so end x equal to 100 comma y equal to for example some value 200 so then just bend so zero errors zero warnings so now if we run the result is 100 and 200 so this is so please that don't use the chain assignments is an initialization this, so this is the it is also important to choose your variable name carefully use short names to minimize the chances for typographical errors also please pick names that describe what the variable represents now finally few comments about integer types an integer is a whole number zero plus minus one plus minus two plus minus three etc in C++ we can also use an unsigned integer this is an integer that is not negative 0 and only the plus values 1 2 3 and etc C++ has nine different integer types the main differences between these nine ty integer type is the range of values that they allow for example on PCs int that we are using here this one int ranges between the value minus 32768 and 32767 and they take two bytes memory an unsigned int range from 0 to 65535 again two bytes so uh, remember a byte is eight bits the standard storage unit per characters so one can also do some arithmetic operations in C++. An operator is a symbol that operates on one or more expressions producing a value that can be assigned to a variable. In C++ we can use plus per addition, minus symbol per subtraction, static symbol per multiplication, backslash symbol per deletion, percentage symbol per remainder. Now I am going to explain all these arithmetic operators through programming. So we already have a program. So int x I will be just switching the values of these two for some reason. int x equal to 200, y equal to 100. Then c out. So then x this will be going with the addition symbol. And then we will be just print the next value y and that will be just with equality with equality symbol and then x plus y and then and l and l so we can give some spaces here to be more readable so i need here i use the plus sign so I need to copy this line, control C and to paste it here for a few more times. One more time, one more time. So here is the subtraction operator. Here is the steric one. Here is the division one and here is the remainder one. So we can do all the automatic operations in C++ with addition plus with subtraction minus with multiplication static with division backslash and with remainder person operator so first we just need to 
save this program then we need to build so zero errors zero warnings so remember x is 200 y is 100 now we need to run so now 200 plus 100 equal to 300 the first one is basically the addition the next subtraction so the next oh, we also need to change these values it's a little bit confusion so here is minus here is steric here is division and here is the remainder one so we need to sell then to build and then to run so here is 200 plus 100 is 300 200 minus 100 is 100 200 multiplied with 100 is 20,000, 200 divided by 100 is 2, and 200 divided by 100, the remainder is 0. So we can simply use the automatic operators in C++ programming. So remember, the integer quotient division and the remainder operators, this one and this one, are more complicated if the integer are not positive. If these are the negative numbers the divisor should never be zero in division the divisor should never be zero if any one integer is negative then quotient and the mandar operators may give different results on different machines so we also need to know about operator precedence like here we use the different operators so you must need to know the operator precedence we, we can also go for one more example uh, for example, I will be just switch the values again. So then I will be just need to define int z equal to x plus y minus 100. So then I just need to print out these variables. So now I don't need all these stuff. So here will be just x. So just to delete these lines in control C then two more times so this is Y and this is Z so this is about operator precedence now look at here we use the minus the plus and also the parenthesis so first it will calculate X plus Y within the parenthesis and then it will be and then we subtract 100 from this result so if we just build unexpected or before C out of oh, the semicolon is missing here. So control S now build zero errors, zero warnings. So now just simply run. So now we have X equal to 100, Y equal to 200. So here X plus Y 100 plus 200 is 300. 300 minus 100 is equal to 200. So that's basically the precedence. The next important thing is the increment and decrement operators in C++. Uh, many features of C++ basically the C++ uh, many features inherit from C. Some of the most useful are the increment operator, the two times plus plus sign and the decrement operator, the two times minus minus sign. These operators transform a variable into a statement expression. We can use these as pre-increment before the variable and force increment after the variable. Same for the decrement operator one and for the increment one. Now I will explain with a simple program how the increment and decrement operator work. We already have int x equal to 100, y equal to 200. So then we already have x so we can just add some more things like here I will just say x equal to x then so this line I will be copy for the y1 control c and then here I we will be have y just delete this one so here also can give some spaces to be more readable now delete this one now I will be use the pre increment operator so here we have X and Y so I will use plus plus 
x and I will use minus minus y. So one is the pre-increment, one is the pre-decrement. Plus plus is for increment and minus minus is for the decrement. So then I will just need to copy these two lines to print the result of these pre-increment and pre-decrement. So then again here will be x and y. So this will be basically y then control s so then now remember x is 100 and y is 200 so you just need to build or oh, some expected primary before token so something or oh, here are the insertion operator we use more than once here we also use more than one time so just save it and then build so zero errors zero warnings and then just simply need to run so now if we check the result so we have the values x equal to 100 y equal to 200 so here is the pre increment operator plus plus x this means x plus 1 so x value is 100 add 1 so the result is 101 here is the pre increment this means y minus 1 so y value is 200 subtract 1 so the result is 199 so that's the way we need to use the pre-increment or the, the pre-decrement operator in programming so one can also use the first one the first increment and decrements so for example if I just change these two here with plus plus and this with the minus minus the control s both have the same function just need to build and now to run so again the same result x is 100 so this again x plus 1 101 so here is y minus 1 so 199 so use as a pre increment or pre decrement or use as a post increment or post decrement the results will be the same we also need to know how to use some of the combined operators so in case of combined operators I need to explain it uh, through programming so here if int x equal to I will be just choosing 10 y I will be just choosing 20 and I will take another variable z equal to 50 the three different variables so then I just need to add this line and this will be part z to print all the three variables on the screen then I just need to use x plus equal 10 and then I just need to print the result of this one so just after this one so here is the x1 then I just need to use y minus equal to then again I will subtract 10 and then I just need to use here y y then I just need to use z static equal to 2 and then this here will be z and z so here is plus the assignment operator 10 this means x equal to x plus 10 so x is already 10 so we will be at 10 so the final result will be 20 here is y equal to y minus 10 so y value is 20 so 20 minus 10 is 10 so here is 50 multiply with 2 so this means 50 so for simplicity we just need to delete these lines just to check the c out for these three operators combined operators so we need to save this program this simply need to build so zero errors zero warnings then you need to run so now here x equal to 10 so plus equal to 10 so this is 20 here y is equal to 20 with minus equality this is equal to 10 here is 50 multiply with 2 so this is equal to 100 so one can use the combined operators in C++ so x plus equal to 10 means add 10 to x y minus equal to 10 subtracts 10 from y and z static equal to 2 means multiply z by 2 
there is another important thing is to use the character type, the char type. In C++, the character type char, C-H-A-R, is one of the integer type. And this means that any variable of type char may be used in integer expression just like any other integer. Remember, whenever a character is input, the system automatically store its ASCII code as the value of the integer type char. And anywhere, and whenever a variable of type char is output, the system automatically send the corresponding character to the output stream. So we need to explain the use of char char with the help of simple program. So until now we are just discussing the integer types. So now we are going to discuss, for example, here we are using char char c equal to comma a and then we just need to print this one so c out this we need to print c and then we just need to use and c and uh, here is n n and l so we just need to delete these things so basically this will convert the expression nc is called a cast c a s t it converts c from character type to integer type this allows to print the sql code for the character so if i use this more more time for a few more times for example here is this one with the post increment operator plus plus then again with plus plus then again with plus plus one more time with plus plus so now basically it will convert c from character type to integer type a this is a character type so this will convert it to the integer type so now just save it then build so there are a lot of warnings undefined functions but now if we just run so here are the results a is basically 65 so here is plus plus so here is 65 plus 1 is 66 then the next 67 68 and this one if we just use this one the char with the end it will simply convert the character into integer types so i hope this lesson will be helpful for advanced programming so thank you